Welcome our dear student of second prep in a new episode of Madrasa al Hawa. Today, inshallah, we are going to continue lesson two in unit one, graduation property uh, in, modern prop, uh, in modern periodic table. The last session, we uh, said what's meant by atomic science and its graduation in uh, period and in group. And uh, we uh, finished our episode uh, by electronegativity. The definition of electronegativity, it is the ability of uh, the atom to attract electrons toward itself. But uh, this uh, atom must be in a covalent compound. Uh, and this electronegativity uh, differ from uh, period and from uh, group. Okay, uh, as we learned from the previous uh, episode, uh, we saw that uh, the electronegativity opposite to the atomic size. So the atomic size in period, it, in, it decrease due to the attraction and the electronegativity increase in period. And in group from up to down, the electronegativity increase while the atomic size decreases. Okay, let's see together what's meant by electronegativity. It is the ability of the atom bonded by covalent bond. Why covalent bond? Because it depends on sharing the electron to attract the shared electron toward itself. As we see in the figure, the period starts with a small electronegativity and end with large electronegativity. So it increases the uh, electronegativity in period and the highest electronegativity element is called this is this one F, which is called fluorine, and it has electronegativity equal four. Okay, this is a diagram for the electronegativity, uh, starting by a low value, ending with a large value, which F. Okay, and as we said that fluorine, the highest electronegativity number four. So any element will be less than four in its electronegativity. But let's see the value in the group we note that it decreases down the group, as we said, opposite to the atomic size. Okay, uh, this is the electronegativity in group, decreases, and electronegativity in the period increases. Okay, moving from the same period, the atomic size decreases and the electronegativity increases. So decrease and increase, this, this relation, we call it inversely proportional decreases down the group. Electronegativity decreases down in the group. Top. What happened to the atomic size also increased. So they are opposite to each other. Top. Due to the difference in electronegativity, so we have compound, uh, covalent, uh, both of them are non-metal elements, but one of them has electronegativity more than the other. So if the difference What's been the difference? The value between the two elements, high value, example like water and ammonia. The water consists of, what's it simple? H2O, two hydrogen atom and oxygen. So it consists of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen has high electronegativity value and hydrogen has low electronegativity value. So the difference between this high value and low value is high, relatively high difference between the two elements. So this is called polar compound. What's meant by the polar compound? The polar compound is the compound that its element, like oxygen and hydrogen, has high difference in electronegativity. Why ammonia and water called polar compound? Because they have high electronegativity difference. Opposite by what's meant by non-polar compound. Non-polar compounds have small difference in electronegativity, like methane and hydrogen sulfide, like methane and hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide. Okay, so we have give reason here. The polarity of water is more than ammonia. As we said, water is a polar compound and ammonia also is a polar compound. Are they are similarly in uh, polarity? No, water is more. Why? Water consists of hydrogen and oxygen, and ammonia consists of nitrogen and hydrogen. If I have hydrogen and hydrogen, the difference oxygen and nitrogen. The oxygen electronegativity in water has high 
is more than el electronegativity of nitrogen in ammonia. So the answer will be because the difference in electronegativity between oxygen and hydrogen in water more than the difference between nitrogen and hydrogen in ammonia. So water is more polar than ammonia. Okay, now we learn the difference between them, uh, polar and non-polar compound, the electronegativity in group and in period. Yep. Uh, first, we say the definition of electronegativity. We know the increasing in uh, electronegativity in period decreases in the group. Uh, it is inversely proportional with the atomic size. Uh, the uh, polarity uh, depend on the electronegativity difference. The polar has high electronegativity difference and the non-polar has low electronegativity difference. Type. When we ask the relation with the atomic size, the atomic size increase in both period uh, and group. So we are going to relate the uh, atomic size with the, let's see, electronegativity with the atomic size in period, like this. Atomic size increase, as we see the two diagram, both of them atomic number increase. So uh, we don't care about the atomic size. We care only about whether it is in period or in group. When the question about increasing the atomic number, both are increased. But is it in period or in group? So electronegativity increase in period, so it is directly proportional. Electronegativity decreases in group, so it is inversely proportional. Okay. This is the second property in the uh, modern periodic table. Now let's have the third and the fourth property. Yep. Uh, we study the first property, atomic size. The second one is electronegativity. Number three, metallic. And number four, non-metallic property. Let's uh, remember what we have taken in the first prep about the metal property. Metal were all solid except mercury. All metals are good conductor of heat and electricity. They are shiny or having luster. They are malleable and ductile, can be shaped. Okay? Also, we have what in the uh, metal, the atomic structure, we have said all metals have less than four in the outermost energy level. Yep, uh, electrons may be one or two or three electrons fill outer energy level, less than four. Okay, so they lose electron and become positive ion. Yep, an electron lose elect metal lose electron and become positive ion. If the metal or the atom lose one electron, so it is positive one ion. If it loses two electrons, so it is positive two ion. If it loses three electrons, so it will become uh, positive three ion type. Why the metal uh, lose electron? So it becomes similar to the noble gases. We said before the atom wants to be like the noble gases. Why? Because they are completed in their outermost energy level. So in order to be like it, they lose and become like the noble gas before them. Before them. Okay, let's see. We started with metals. Number one, they have less than four electrons, yani one or two or three electrons in their outermost energy level. Then they lose electron. We know that the uh, sign of the electron is negative. So by losing, the positive will be more and it remains positive ion. The number of positive charge equal the lost electron. As we said, if we lose one, if, uh, the remaining is one positive. Is if we lose two electrons, the remaining is two positive. The electronic structure of positive ion is like what? Nearest to the preceding inert gas in the periodic table. Okay, let's uh, explain this uh, point. Okay, if for example we have calcium, calcium twenty. Let's make the configuration to 8, 8, 2. The outer energy level consists of 2, so it is metal. To be completed, it will lose these two electrons and become calcium 
plus 2 and 2, 8, 8. This is a complete positive ion. Okay? Now the structure is similar to 2. And I count the atomic number. Count the atomic number. 2 plus 8 plus 8, 18. What's have at the uh, atomic number 18? Argon. A noble gas only before the calcium. So it loses 2 to become like this noble gas which before it in the uh, 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 periodic table. Okay? Let's see the non-metal or uh, discuss first the uh, property of the property of metal in the periodic table as we see the metallic property decrease in what in period and in group what happen it increase why due to the decrease in atomic size let's explain this point okay if we have we are going to draw diagrammatically the model periodic table We said that metallic property, we have here cesium, the strongest metal. Okay, so by going there in period, okay, this is end with the noble gas and non-metal, so metallic decrease in period okay you a why give reason why the metallic decrease okay because as we move in the period from left to right what happen atomic size decrease also type here what happened to the metallic property? We said this is the strongest metal found in the model periodic table. So by going down, okay, increase. Why? Atomic size increase. Okay, so as the size of the atom increase, it become a strong atom. As the size of the atom decrease, it become a weak metal. Okay? If a metal and the atomic size are directly proportional, are directly proportional. Okay? And this is a common give reason why the metallic property decrease in period due to the decrease in atomic size. The next one, we are going to explain the non-metal. Okay, as we said before, what's meant by non-metal? Okay, we have taken it in grade uh, first prep. Uh, the non-metal uh, are uh, uh, found in many states, gases state, like uh, oxygen and the nitrogen. Uh, they may be solid state, like uh, carbon and the phosphorus. Uh, the only liquid uh, we uh, found in the a non-metal is uh, bromine type. They are bad conductor of heat and electricity, except graphite or the carbon in its form graphite. Then uh, the outermost energy level consists of uh, five or six or seven. So it is more than four electrons. Yeah, when we make the configuration, the outer energy level five or six or seven, yeah, this ion is a non-metal ion or non-metal element. When it's going, uh, going to share in a chemical reaction, it wants to complete the outer energy level by 8, so it gains electron. The electron have a negative charge, so it becomes a negative ion. Gaining negative, so it will become a negative ion. The number of gained electron equals the number of the uh, negative charge on the ion. Example, if I gain one electron, so the ion will be a negative one. If I gain two electrons, the ion will be negative two. And if I gain in a negative three, uh, three electrons, it will be negative three. Okay? Type. When it loses, it becomes a negative ion. Type. When it becomes a negative ion, it will be similar to the noble gas. Which noble gas? The noble gas which follow it in the periodic table. Will follow it in the uh, 
periodic table. Let's explain uh, the follow it uh, in the uh, periodic table. For example, we have here chlorine. It is a non-metal. The atomic number of chlorine 17. Let's have the atomic configuration. 2, 8, 7. 7 less, uh, more than 4, so it is non-metal. It's going to gain one electron, so one negative charge, two, eight. Two, eight, this is similar to what? This is similar to the noble gas which follow it in its electron, two, eight, eight. So this is two, eight, eight, eighteen. This is also eighteen argon, the noble gas which comes after the chlorine in its uh, model periodic table in the same period. Okay, let's again have overlook on the metal. What are metal? They are elements have more than four electron, maybe uh, five, six, or seven. In chemical reaction, they gain electron and become what? Negative ion. The electronic structure of the negative ion similar to what? To the inert gas which a follow. If a non-metal similar to the inert gas, follow them, and the metal before them, okay? The charges on the negative ion equal to the number of the gained electrons, okay? Time. Now we are going to discuss the uh, non-metallic property uh, in group and in period. The non-metallic property or the non-metal is inverse to the atomic size. So in the period from left to right, the non-metal what will happen? It will increase. So the fluorine will become the strongest non-metal. The strongest non-metal. Okay? Why it is the strongest non-metal? Because it has the smaller size. Type in group, from up to down. From up to down, opposite to the atomic size, the non-metallic property, what will happen to it? It will decrease. Why it decreases? because the atomic size will be large or more uh, size will increase, opposite to it, okay? So let's summing up the four property in the model periodic table together in one diagram, okay? Again, we are going to have a diagrammatic of model periodic table. Here we have Cesium, and here we have fluorine. Cesium, what we call it? Strongest metal. Why? Because it is the largest atomic size. Okay? So, metallic and size increase they are directly proportional with each other type what about the other two property fluorine is coal the strongest non metal why it is called the strongest non metal because it is the ha, smallest size and highest electronegativity. So have a look on this diagram. Strongest metal, strongest non-metal. Okay? Yibha from this to this, here the metallic property decrease. Tab. Largest atomic size, Highest electronegativity. So they are opposite to each other. By this, the metallic decrease. Type. What happened to the size? Size increase. Okay? So we must uh, uh, study this diagram and we have to know uh, 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 how to uh, find the relation between the four property 
uh, we have taken the metallic and the atomic size, non-metallic and the highest electronegativity. Okay, this is summing up for the four property we have taken. Atomic size like the metal, atomic size and metal are similar. They increases in uh, group and decreases in period. Non-metallic is like the electronegativity. They increase in period and decrease in group. So they are opposite to each other or inversely proportional. Okay, now we are going to uh, deal with the metal and their chemical reaction. First, we will test metal with diluted acid. Then we'll test metal with oxygen and determine whether they are alkaline or basic in effect. Okay, let's see together. Here, uh, the non-metallic property increase in uh, period and decrease in group because the atomic size decrease. This is the reaction of uh, metal with uh, diluted acid. What's meant by diluted acid? It means that this acid is um, uh, not concentrated. Uh, it contains a little bit of uh, water. Okay, Magnesium is an active metal. It reacts with uh, HCl. But how can I know it reacts due to the formation of hydrogen gas? Okay, in experiment, how we make this experiment? We uh, do it inside the lab. Here's the test tube. Okay, this test tube, we uh, fill it with diluted HCl, hydrochloric acid. And then we add a, a piece of magnesium inside it. And observe what happened. By adding the magnesium, this is the magnesium, Mg. When we add it, we will observe that there is a bubbles. When we saw a bubble, this is indicate that there's a gas evolved, that a gas evolved. The gas is called hydrogen gas. Yep. Uh, we have magnesium plus 2 HCl diluted, hydrogen gas evolved, and it gives magnesium chloride. Okay? Now we reach the end of our uh, episode uh, until we meet again, inshallah, next uh, week to continue the reaction of metal with oxygen and its effect with uh, litmus paper. Until we meet again, thanks for your watching and goodbye.